Okay, so this is our first question. So we have this question and we're also going to look at these other questions, how to solve them. So uh, this is, I mean, um, the topic of sets in mathematics, it's one of the simplest uh, topics. And uh, I believe we're going to cover this question in just a few minutes. All right, so let's quickly begin. Okay, so this is uh, coming from the intervals. Then the question is um, set A is equal to negative seven less or equal to X less or equal to three, where X is a member of real numbers. Then set B is X is greater than negative one, where X is also a member of what? Real numbers. Find the following and show each of them on the number line. So this is a very simple question. I don't know if you solved this question, but um, I remember I solving something like this. Okay, so let me just go through it quickly. So the first thing that we need to do is to list the sets. So we have set A and set B. So set A, they are saying that it, they're saying that these are numbers between negative seven and three. Yeah. So whenever you just see this, uh, when you see that x is a member of real numbers should know that you're dealing with intervals. If you have these symbols in between, and if you have a, a, a range here that has been given, rather a domain that has been given here, and you have uh, the set that has been given there as a set of, in, uh, of real numbers, should know that you're dealing with what? Intervals. So here, we're talking about negative seven, and what? And the three. So now we have to look, the, we ha we have to look at the symbol that has been given there, so to check here, here we have less or equal to symbol. So what that means is that uh, because of this equal to symbol, it implies that uh, negative seven is part of the set. So we use this kind of a bracket there. And then this kind of a symbol there, we don't have the equal to symbol, it's just less than. So this implies that we're writing an open bracket there. We move on to the second part. So, the second part, uh, the second part here is uh, B, and we have, um, and B says X is greater or equal to negative one. So what this means is that the smallest number that we have in this set is what? Negative one. So we write negative one there. And then the largest number, they are saying it's greater. So we have no limit. So we put infinity there. And then when you check, we have, uh, greater or equal to, because of the equal sign symbol there, uh, we use this kind of a sign on the negative one. But on the infinite part, there is always this sign. Whether negative or positive infinite, we always use an open bracket. So now having uh, found this, we can now find what A intersection B is. So we can first use a number line to find this. Uh, so it becomes easier when you're using a number line. So A intersection B, we draw a number line. So on this number line, I'm going to put my A and my B. So this number line that I'll first draw, you can either draw it on a separate paper just to help you find the solution. And then the final number line which they want us to draw, I'm going to draw it and show you how to draw it. Okay, so we put in the important uh, values, the important numbers. So we have... In A, we have uh, negative seven and what? And three, so I'm going to put three there. And then in B, we have, in B we have, um, we have negative one. Then infinity, uh, it just means that it's, it's going this side, so we can't write it anywhere. So let us put in the sets now. So we have negative seven comma what? comma three, so negative seven comma three, we're closing at negative seven because it's a closed bracket that we have here. We have a square bracket, so we shed the circle there. And then at three, there's an open bracket, so we leave the circle open. And then we're drawing a straight line like this. Yeah, so from there, from there what you do is, you look at this one here. So we've managed to, so we've managed to write the set A. 
So let us also write set B. So set B is simply just um, ranging from what? From, it's ranging from negative one to infinity. So B is starting from where negative one to what? To infinity. So is it open or closed at negative one? It's closed. So we shade at negative one there. And then we are drawing this or saying this goes up to what? Infinity. So the question is asking us to find what? A intersection B, meaning we're trying to look at the common part, the common elements between A and B. So now how do we find the common element? So the common uh, part between A and B is simply just the point at which the two lines, that the two lines, the, the yellow and the white lines are meeting. So we have this line. This is the common part between these two lines. This is where they are intersecting. So this is our solution. That's where our solution lies. So we have a intersection B is equal to, so we get the first number there. The first number will be what? Will be negative one. And since it's shaded there, meaning we close the bracket there and then we say comma, then the last number there is what? A positive three. And then since it's open, you leave it open like that. So this is A intersection B. Now, how do we find A complement? So we are done with the first part. Let us move on to A complement. So A complement, A complement, uh, okay. Uh, uh, when you are, you are drawing this, this uh, number line, this U line, uh, set, set B, uh, which is infinite. Okay. Is it okay when you draw the line for infinite before reaching, like, for example, this is three? If you just end that ka, 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 ka line, which is heading to the set infinity, or kafi kiza cut here before, yeah, just like maybe this ka yellow line, you just end maybe before reaching this is three. Yeah, it's it's okay, but you, you just confuse yourself because when shading, you end somewhere and you end up making a mistake and write maybe if maybe you had a number somewhere here, uh, let's say you had zero and then you make a mistake, you end it here. Then you, when shading, you also make a mistake, you end there. It means that you are going to get this as one of your solutions and that implies that you errored. So that will just help you to make an error. Okay, okay, okay. So, it, okay. so it's so okay. It's important. Yes, it should be the last one at least. Okay, thank you. All right. So to find a complement. I also got a question. Okay. Um, how do you know the kind of brackets to put? And how do you know what? The kind of brackets to put. The, the kind of when when a, okay. When we use this kind of a bracket, um, did you watch the previous video? Because I believe you joined late. So okay. So you should find time to watch the previous video. I explained what these brackets mean. So let me just do a quick um, revision. So when we use this kind of a bracket, it means that we're saying um, the number which is here is part of the set. And as a result, uh, when it comes to the interval notation, you say uh, two less or equal to. So whenever you see this less or equal to, it means that there's this kind of a bracket and it's part of what, and the number there is part of what? The set. So when you have something like this, so whenever you don't have an equal sign symbol, whenever you don't have an equal sign symbol like this one here, means that you are using this kind of a bracket. So at three, you use this kind of a bracket. This implies that uh, we are, I mean, this three is not part of this set. But we are talking about numbers that are from two and the numbers that are slightly closer to three. These are numbers like 2.99999, those numbers. Yeah, because when you're talking about real numbers, we are simply, when you talk about this set you've been given here, this set of real numbers is simply just a set that um, comprises of what? All rational numbers and irrational numbers. So when you add rational and irrational numbers, you come up with a set known as the set of real numbers. So this set uh, 
comprises of, uh, comprises of all rational and irrational numbers. So rational numbers, these are just numbers that are uh, that can be written in a fraction form. So any number that you are able to represent in a fraction form is called a rational number. And then those numbers that you cannot, um, uh, those numbers that you cannot be able to express in a fraction form, those are called irrational numbers. So numbers like the square root of two, it's impossible for you to express this square root of two in a fraction form. And as a result, the square root of two is what? Is an irrational number. The square root of three, two is an irrational number. The square root of five is an irrational number. The square root of six is an irrational number. These numbers that I've written here, they are, um, it's impossible for you to express them in a fraction form, including pi. Pi is an irrational number because you can't express this in a fraction form. And all those numbers like one over two, three over five, any number that you can express in a fraction form is called a rational number. Yeah, so whenever dealing with intervals, we're talking about irrational num I mean, we're talking about real numbers. So we're talking about, when you have a set like this one, this implies that we're talking about numbers from what? From two to three. So when I write a set like this, let me give two examples of sets, and I'm sure this will help you. So when you have, let's say set A is equal to, open brackets, one, five. And set B is equal to, open brackets, one comma five. So uh, this, in this set, the number of elements in set A is what? Is two. There are only two elements in this set. There is one and there is five. But the number of elements in set B is what? Infinity. You can't count the number of elements in this set. Why do I say so? It's practically impossible for you to count numbers, to count real numbers that are between one and five. So between one and five, we have numbers like 1.1, .1, we have numbers like 1.00001, we have numbers like 1.00000000. You write zeros up to Lusaka and write a one at the end. So those numbers, so it's impossible to count those numbers between. Um, I mean, the numbers that, the real numbers that are between one and five. You also have 4.0000000501111112. So you have such numbers. So it's practically impossible. Yeah, so when you talk about uh, intervals, we're talking about uh, sets that have infinity um, numbers in them. Even if we write something like this, two comma five, this implies that two and five are part of the set because we're using this kind of a bracket. But in this set, we don't have one and five. We're just talking about numbers between one and five. So if I, if I say two comma five, here we're saying five is part of this set, but two is not in this set because of this bracket, which is there. Have you gotten something, Linda? Yes, sir. All right, so you should find time to go through the previous uh, lesson that I sent. Yeah, just just find time to go through that. It's important because where we're going would we'll be dealing with um, real numbers in most cases. I will. I will. All right, so we proceed. So we have, um, where was I? I was trying to find the complement of set A. So A complement, we're simply talking about numbers that are not in A. Yeah, so when we talk about A complement, we're simply talking about numbers that are that are outside A, the numbers that are not part of the set A. So the set A that we have is what? 
uh, set A is ranging from what? From negative seven to three. So when you look at set A, look at the brackets that we have there properly. Oh, sorry, I didn't write A intersection B on the real line. Yeah, but for those, there are some lectures who can even mark you even if you represent this as your A intersection B, but I like it when it's like this. Let me show you. After finding the final answer, then you write it very neat on a number line. So A intersection B, you draw your number line there and you write uh, the numbers there. So you can have, you say you have negative one and three there. So we can have negative one, zero, one, two, three. And then you put your negative one there, you close the brackets, then you open at three. So it's open at three and then you join the two lines. So you can either represent it like this and then there's some markers who want it to be presented like this. So while there's this kind of a bracket, you put that. Then while there's this open bracket there, you put this. Yeah, so some uh -huh. markers like it like this. Over the the, the, the presenting of uh, this, after my, my paper solution on the real line versa, okay. uh, kindly we need guidance. There is a, a copy that I sent in your WhatsApp, that, that task that you gave us. Yeah. They, 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 at your free time, please go through the, the document. You see, uh, ah, to number tankala kona to my challenges. Okay. All right, no problem. I'll do that. Okay. So proceed. All right. So we have a complement. Huh? We're trying to find a complement. So a complement, we're trying to talk about the numbers that are not in A, but they are in the universal set. So the universal set here is what? The set of what? Real numbers. The set of real numbers is the universal set. Yeah, so we're talking about all the numbers. So the set of real numbers is the universal set. So now a complement will start from where? From negative infinity from negative infinity, and then at an infinite uh, symbol, there's always an open bracket. So it will start from negative infinity, and then it will end up to where? Negative seven. So it will end at negative seven. But since negative seven is part of A, looking at the bracket, which is there, it's a square bracket, meaning negative seven is part of A. It, it means that in the complement, it's not going to be part of that set. So negative seven will not be part of the complement, so we use this kind of a bracket. And then I'll write my union here. The reason why I'm writing union is because I also have numbers that are above three, which are not in A, but they are in the universal set. So I'm going to write union to show that I'm adding another set to this side. So am I supposed to open or close at three? I'm supposed to close because um, I'm supposed to write a closed bracket because three is not part of set A, meaning it's going to be part of the complement. And then we say comma positive infinity. So this is our A complement. So A complement starts from where? From negative infinity, and then it ends at negative seven. So negative seven is part of A because of the square brackets which are there. Negative seven is part of set A because of the square brackets there. And then this means that it's not going to be part of what? And so it means that it's not going to be part of... Um, negative seven is not going to be part of the, co the, the A complement. And then when you look at three there, three is, three is not... Um, yeah, so three is not part of set A because of the bracket which is there. And this tells us to say in the A complement, three will be part of this set. So A will be part, I mean, three will be part of A complement. Hence, we put a square bracket there. And then this goes up to positive infinity. So this is our A complement. 
And then we can also find B complement. So B complement has been given to be what? Rather B has been given as, yeah, so B has been given to be what? Where is B? Okay, B has been given here and we found it here. So that is our B. Now, how do we find B complement? So B complement, we're trying to look at the numbers that are not in B, but they are in the universal set. So the universal set, I said to say, it's a set of what? Real numbers. So now, how do you find B complement? So B complement starts from where? From negative infinity, from negative infinity up to, um, yeah, so B complement starts from negative infinity up to what? Up to, okay, so B complement starts from negative infinity up to what? Where is B? Okay, B is here, up to one. So we up to negative one rather. So negative one is part of the set B. So if it's part of the set B, it means that it's not going to be part of the complement. So if we don't want to include it in the complement, it means that we use this kind of a bracket. And if it's part, I mean, and on this other side, where there's an infinite symbol, we said on the, on the infinite symbol, we always have to put the open bracket there. So that is exactly how you, uh, you solve such a question. Okay. So now how do we present uh, A complement on the real line and B complement? The same thing that I showed you, there's nothing different here. So A complement, I'll just put the most important numbers, but if you want, you can also include other numbers. So I'll put negative seven there, and I'll also put what, three there. So I'm going to write, um, I'm going to open it at negative seven, and it's going towards negative infinity. And then it's also going to be closed at three. So it will be closed at three. It will be closed at three. And then um, to be closed at three, and then to go to the positive infinity. So this one, that's the number line. And then you can also write this one to be, so this one, we can have maybe negative one, zero, one, and then you have negative two there. So we're saying this one is ranging from what? Yeah, so this one, you can show it as a complement, a complement. So we're saying this one is ranging from negative infinity to one. So from negative infinity to what? To negative one. So at negative one, it's open. So we can leave it open like that. But if you don't want to uh, do this, you can just put this kind of a bracket. It's still the same. Okay. So let's quickly, let's quickly continue. Okay, so I think we're in the last 10 minutes. Let me explain the next question.